As well as plotting numerical relationships like we did in the past one, Seaborn also makes box plots and other categorical plots really easy. Now, we do have to do something a bit different here, and that's this dot melt. So we're using the same data, iris, but iris is what's called a wide form data frame. There's lots and lots of columns, each describing different things. What melt does is it shrinks the data frame and makes it a long data frame. This means that instead of having a column for sepal length and a column for sepal width, we just have a column that says measurement and then the value in a column that says measure. So I'm going to add a line to this cell which prints iris melted and just the first five rows. Let's run the cell and we'll go over the plot in a second. So my first five rows, I still have a species common column, which I said was an ID variable. I now, for each row, have just one measurement, which here is a sepal length of 5.1, here is a sepal length of 4.9. If I change this to, plot, uh, to show the last five rows of my data frame, I can see that I've got columns for petal width, which are 1.9, and petal width, 2.9. So this changes the shape of my data frame. It's not really important why we do this, it's just something that's needed for making, making categorical plots. We can then use a Seaborn function, just like we used above for these linear plots, we're now using one called catplot. Again, we've told it the x variable, which here is categorical, species, the y variable, which is also categorical, measurement, and the column Sorry, the y variable, which is numerical measurement, and the column, which is the measure itself, so petal width or petal length. We've told it that the data is in iris melted and not in iris, and we've said we'd like box plots. Again, we've said we'd like a box plot of five inches with a width of half of that. So you can see here, for each measure, sepal length, sepal width, petal length, and petal width, we've got one box plot per species. We've got automatic outliers, this is the median and the range. That was such a long one to get through. I'm so upset that I failed on literally the last thing I was going to say. This thing is really to tell. Because at the moment when you scroll down to the, to the plot yeah, okay. and say... Uh, yeah. So you can see here that we've got four different plots one for each measure, sepal length, sepal width, petal length, and petal width, one column for each species, setosa, setosa, versicolor, versicolor, and we've got automatically calculated outliers and a standard kind of box plot format with the range as the whiskers. And here we've just called the, the uh, So you can see we've got four axes here, um, one for sepal length, one for sepal width, one for petal length, and one for petal width. And in each one, we've got three box plots, one for setosa, one for versicolor, and one for virginica. We've got automatic outlier calculation, and this is a standard kind of box plot format. If we were to go into our Seaborn documentation and search for the cat plot, which is what we used, we can see that we can have different types of categorical plots, such as box, violin, a box EN, strip and swarm, and that there are an awful lot of parameters that we can pass to change what these look like and how they hold. And right at the bottom, we can see various examples of categorical plots and how they were made.